Good evening. I wrap scene with your Spider ETF stock market wrap up. And this wrap up is for Monday, the 2nd of October, the beginning of a new quarter, beginning of a new month, beginning of a new week, October 2nd, 2023. All right. So pretty much what uh, I thought was going to happen once I realized over the weekend that a deal had been wrong between the House and the Senate. I didn't think that was gonna happen. I'll call that the miracle in Washington, D.C., because it took me by surprise. The 11th hour, uh, the House Speaker willing to risk his House leadership because the far right wing is going to come after him and try to dismantle, if you will, him from his House leadership. Who's gonna take over? Well, I certainly hope it's not Mr. Gates that is, keeps coming after him because his job is to do one thing. And by the way, I'm not against what Mr. Gates is trying to do in the sense of lower the amount of spending that the US is doing. I'm all for what he's doing. But the far right to throw out somebody that you need a moderate in there, no. Because if you're all hard right, you'll never get anything done. I think you all realize that. I realize it. But I, I do understand what a 41-year-old that's been in there now and seeing what's going on and he hates it, I get what he's saying. So please, if you ever see this, not your enemy on that. So what we did is, not what we, what Congress did is they bought us another 45 days approximately for them to work out some type of deal concerning more money for Ukraine, more money for the border, and hopefully a reduction in spending. I think that's going to be the problem, the reduction in spending. I think the other two are doable. I don't know how you go about a reduction in spending because with an election year coming up, everybody's got what they call a pork barrel and they just want to spend, spend, spend. Nobody's paying attention to what interest rates are doing in Congress. They keep going higher. And part of the problem is as they're spending, the U.S. Treasury keeps floating more and more auctions. As the auctions are there, you don't really have China buying the way they used to. What if Japan decides not to buy? They're one of the biggest holders of our debt. Should they decide to do that, where are you going to do all this? I mean, that could be if Japan decides not to buy your debt our debt. That could be the breaking, the camel, the straw, the broke the back, all, you know, the sayings, they're all there. That's what could be the key. Got to be careful. So today I decided to go to Walgreens again and test them one more time with my shot. They sent me my email as I'd expect. I showed up 15 minutes early. To my surprise, there was no line because it's a Monday. It's not the weekend. I figured that would be in my favor. I saw at the counter three people, one girl just doing absolutely just doing paperwork, the other two doing their thing with clients. There was a gentleman, me and another person. The other person gotten to the line. Finally, somebody left. The other gentleman and I, a young kid comes in, stands behind us. And I look at him, I go, we're in line. It took no more than him waiting like the rest of us, eight, nine minutes. He just went to the front of the line, cut in front of us. If you know anything about me, I call people out. And I go, so what part of the grammar didn't you understand? Are you from America? I said, we were in line. Oh, well, would you like to go ahead of me? I just called him out. Didn't matter. But you got to do that. You can't let people get away with it. You've got to say something, otherwise this whole thing gets out of control. Make a long story. There were three people up there. One girl's working her desk thing. He happened to get to her, and she's taking care of him. And I'm watching. Hmm. I happened to, when the lines got through, she became the person I got to because she's now taking people. I said, why did you not when you were doing all that work, not look up. Oh, I'm just here to give shots. I said, but you took care of that person. Well, yeah, that's what they called me in. I said, so how would we know that your only function here is to do that? You know me, I don't stop. And the answer from her was, oh, maybe I should have a sign. Walgreens, you still don't have it. You're getting better, but you don't have it. Now, Walgreens did experience some short covering. It happened on Friday. Maybe my message got through. I don't know, but I am going to cover it from time to time. And what they did, if we come to this chart right here, and I want to come back to this because it's so important. 
We'll take all this and back off a little bit. And I do hope you see the pattern, lower highs, lower lows. So if you take out the day before this is high, which is 2146, in terms of a swing line, you break the downtrend, watch. When that happens, you've stepped out of there. So now the question is, what happens next? So let's finish this up and this is where you are. The resistance points, the 18-day average, and you slide right through it. Normally, you stop at these numbers a little better than that. And you went into what's called an inside trading day today. So if the market, this is just how I teach swing lines. If the market takes out Friday's high now, what can happen on that is then the objective becomes 2276, the upper Bollinger Band. And that should be a pretty stiff resistance point in the market. In addition, momentum turned up with the market. So if you and I come back here and we look at this in a, a good way, this is the close of business Thursday. Friday, the game was over on the downside, putting in play the potential of that number. Now, will we? Oh, let me come back to that. Maybe that's what I should do to finish this up for us. So will the market get there? That's going to be the question. I think that you'll find support now, at the 18-day average resistance up there. Rivian. So Rivian beats on everything today. Tesla numbers and Rivian come out in car manufacturing, what they delivered versus expectations. But if you take a look where the market went, the Bollinger Band is $24.99. You didn't hit it. You got higher. And then the market dropped down. So today's low of 23.37, did it take out? And that becomes the big question, Friday's low. Friday's low was 23.39. You had what's called an outside day down. So in parlance, there's a good chance that after a big rally from the recent low of 20.40 all the way up today to 24.87, a 20% rally, 20%. $20, $4, market probably was the old buy the rumor, sell the fact. And you could pull back here and have to play around for a little while, maybe at the $22.97 level and you're overbought. I don't think traders are going to deploy new money in an overbought market. In UGA, gas still down. I don't know. Today, heating oil, of all things, got smashed. You were down in uh, Brent, you were down in WTI, down obviously in gas. OPEC has got their ministerial meeting right now. Word came out today, late in the day, that both Russia and the Saudis got together and they gave the market an extra about 800,000 barrels a day in the month of September. You never know these things till they finish up and it's been verified by some seaborne traffic numbers. So. Okay, they helped the market a little bit. When we look at XLF, you've got lower highs, lower lows. The market is oversold. Is it going to try to embed? Both numbers are under today, the uh, 20 level. Yesterday, Friday, the markets were under the 20 level, and the day before they were. Therefore, you have an embedded reading. Day before they were not. All it takes is several. So, if you get a hard rally, I'm expecting to see sellers show up in this market. I'll probably be telling my clients about that and trying to hit this market on the upside. There's a number, if you've taken the enhanced Bollinger Band course that I have, there's a way to enter and a number that you want to pick. It's all in that course. It's on the website, irapstein.com under education. In XLI, same thing. You've got an embedded reading. So did we lose that reading on Friday? The answer is no. You were still with a 15.8. So rallies, and I expect you could get a rally over the next day or two with the hard break you saw in many markets today. If they just pick up and rally in the morning, I think you're going to find willing sellers on the rally until the red line closes over 21, and then you get more short covering if and when that happens. In Disney, you can see the trend is down. The first real resistance here is 82.18. I don't think you're going to see uh, the pros deploy short money. In other words, new short positions when you're just in an oversold market. I think that's got to come out of the market. Then they'll take another look at that. In RSP, today is the first day where a lot of people, 40 million, 
have to begin paying back student loans. Now, they can miss a payment or two because the department's going to be very lax on them in the first year. So there'll be some that do, but payments are going to come. And the vast majority of people, the way it works, they do try to make their payments. What does that do to discretionary spending? We'll find out what the average repayment bill is probably a month from now, how this is going. But I, of course, and so many others are concerned that as that goes on, there's going to be lax money. Will it affect going to the bars at night by the younger people, restaurants, buying something a little less in clothing? I don't know. But it is money not to be spent on themselves in theory. So it, there should be an impact. In the home builders, you're still in problems. Are you watching interest rates climb? They're on what I'll call a tear. I was watching CNBC and Rick Santelli did a special this afternoon at around four o'clock or thereafter, as he, I guess he's in New York. And he's talking, you can go to 13% interest rates long-term. Whoa, whoa. I mean, that's really stretching it out. I don't know, Rick. Uh, not saying you're wrong, I'm saying right now, I'm agreeing that rates are going higher, but 13% is a huge number, and I see where he made the call from. When we look at XLE, we have a higher high, lower and low. This was a spot, if you were sitting next to me, I'd give you that elbow in the ribs and say, why aren't you covering shorts against the Bollinger Band? So that's what I think should have been done. Gold's in a free fall. High rates, higher dollar, why own the gold? And it's just been collapsing every single day. It is oversold. It's under the left-hand side of the Bollinger Band. I never tell you to go short under a Bollinger Band. And this has now got traders caught. Now, you're getting to an excessive point. You're four days in a row under the band. Generally, in futures markets, you don't go more than five. I've seen seven in the ETFs can happen. So I'm watching. SLV, the same thing. Metals are just the enemy of metals is high rates. High rates stop economy. Economy stop. You don't need raw materials to build things. That's the way to look at it. Yet, in a positive note, some of the numbers coming out of China this morning and now over the weekend were actually improved numbers in factories. The problem for America, if you get my morning reports that I put out, um, I gave a chart in there of how much imports we're not doing with China any longer. We're, we're doing everywhere we can move out of China, America is, that makes sense. So it could be Vietnam, Malaysia, all these other countries, and you see where the shift is taking, and you see the big line down is with the, the drop off and what we're sending where we can. Now there's another round of AI and chips going to hit China export restrictions. I'm cracking up because the Biden administration wants to get President Xi to come here for an Asian Pacific summit that's going to be in San Francisco in November. And at the same time, they want to put on more restrictions. Do you think that's the way to get him to come? I'm talking President Xi. Hmm, I've got my doubts. But again, the Biden administration's unique. They look at everything in their own way. They wear glasses that you and I don't have. TLT, lower highs, lower lows, look at how down. By the way, it's not just Biden. Trump did the same type of things, all right? I, I'm anti-politicians, and unfortunately, they're the ones we elect to put in the office, and then we got to live with the things they told us before they get in and what they do after they get in. Does that sound familiar to any of you? That's how it works. Um, you keep hitting the lower band. All you did is move to the right. You took off the selling pressure. Boom. This is sort of the pattern that I'm looking for gold to do in the next, let's call it 48 hours, move to the right-hand side. In UUP, the dollar, look at how powerful this move is to the upside. You hit the bands, you back off a little bit. This is classic if you've taken the enhanced Bollinger Band course that I have, what it's about, where to come in, how to do it, take the course and do it yourself. In FXE, it's the flip-flop. Now, this is an important day in FXE. Let me walk you into um, Friday right here. So on Friday, you had a reading of 24.66. 
in theory, out of all shorts now, the way I teach it, only if you re-embed with both numbers back under 20 today is the play back and then you're reverting back to selling on new shorts on the way back up with the rules that you have in my course. This absolutely qualifies for it. So that's where you're at. If you lose the reading again with the reading over 21, the odds favor you will probably make a run to the 18 uh, day average of closes. But until that happens, you got nothing and you study it and it's a, it was a head fake. And now you move back in and you play the game accordingly when you see those things happen. And one of the things I want you to do as traders is learn. That's really what it's about. Now, you did see that, uh, is it Bitwise came out with their new ETFs? There were four ETFs on crypto and Ethereum released today. So it's beginning. Now, none of these are based on spot markets. They're all based on futures. When I teach you what futures are, patterns, all that through here. So I'd love for you to take a good hard look at what we teach, how we teach it, where we're at. In our futures kit, we give you just so much information that you can utilize. So to utilize it, what do you do? All you need to do is move your cursor up here and you'll see free offers. All of this is included. We'll send you a link, you open up the link, puts itself immediately on your desktop and away you go with all this. www.irapstein.com, free offers for the futures kit. Move your cursor up to the top here. That's another way to get it. If you have questions, call my staff. I'm Ira, thanks for watching. I'll see you first thing in the morning tomorrow. It'll be an interesting one, I promise you, with all that is going on. Take care.